Welcome back to Gaming Top Down. Today I'm continuing my video series going over every game that I have in my collection and breaking them into different categories. Games that are coming in the near future, ones I haven't played yet, games I'm thinking about purging, and my favorite games that start with that letter. Today we're going over games that start with the letter P. So without any more talk, let's jump right in. <laughs> First up, I have one upcoming game that starts with the letter P that should be delivering in the next month or two from Kickstarter, and it is Perch by Inside Up Games. And this is a fairly simple kind of area majority game, and it looks like it can be a little bit mean, but which I'm not usually a fan of, but it's a unique way that it's mean. On each turn, you'll be placing out birds onto these different location tiles. But at the beginning of each round, you will have two birds of your color and then two randomly drawn from a bag that might also be your color or be the other player's color. So you'll be placing potentially some of your opponent's birds out, which is kind of an interesting um, randomization idea there. So it seems like it's light enough and has a you know, a couple clever things going on there that should help mitigate some of the meanness. Really cool pieces. I like Inside Up. You know, Earth is their most successful game recently. And so I wanted to give this one a chance. That is Perch in the upcoming category. Okay, for games I haven't been able to play yet, I only have one. This is Paris, the City of Light from Devere. And this is a strictly two-player game. And in this game, you'll play over two phases. In the first phase, you'll be placing kind of these tiles on this grid underneath these different streets um, in one of three different colors, your color, the opponent's color, or a shared color that both of you can use. And then in the second kind of phase of the game, you'll be placing buildings and um, what are these called? They're like your... Uh, your meeples and they are the chimneys i believe that are on top of the building so they can keep track of point scoring and the more of your buildings i believe that you build next to the uh, lamp posts you get points for there's also a few kind of mini modules in the game for some randomization that you can add in if you want i have quite a bit of variability in those cards to change from game to game so i'm excited to play this one small box two-player game that I uh, have been looking out for a while and just got recently. So excited to play Paris, the City of Light. Okay, I have a few games in my thinking about purging category. And first up is one that I would purge, but my wife really likes it and it does have a lot of sentimental value for me. This is phase 10, kind of the, the game that gamers beat up on the most, I think. But um, yeah, like I mentioned, very nostalgic, sentimental game for me. I played it dozens and dozens of times with my grandmother before she passed away in my early years. Um, her and her sisters love, love games. And so they actually invented 10 more phases and I would play phase 20. Would take this game that usually takes a couple of hours to, uh, you know, maybe double that, which is longer than this game should last, in my opinion. So yeah, for the nostalgia factor, I'll, I'll play it every once in a while, but I, I do think there are much better games at this uh, kind of weight that play in a much shorter time that give a better experience. But Phase 10 will probably stay around, even though I think it, it probably deserves to be purged. Next up is a tiny card game called Papageno. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And this one, I think I just need to try a couple more times. It's a very short little card game. I believe it's kind of a variant of the card game Golf. You're drawing a card from the top of the deck or the discard pile and putting it in your little tableau of six different cards here, trying to get the lowest score. If you get the same bird in a column, their scores cancel out and give you a zero, which is good. Some of the cards are negative points, and I think some of the eggs and other cards do some special abilities. Plays very quickly. I love the tiny little box, but I'm not sure if it has enough 
depth. So need to play a, a time or two more to uh, really figure that out. That is Papageno. Okay, next up is one that I think is pretty fun, but yeah, just didn't really excel for me. And that is Pictomania. In this one, it's kind of a Pictionary variant. Everyone is drawing a picture at the same time, but at the same time that you're drawing, you're looking at all of the other people drawing and trying to guess what they're drawing as well. So it's a little bit zany and chaotic in that way where you're trying to guess quickly um, and draw yours quickly. And I think you get points for both things, for having other people guess yours quickly and for guessing what other the other players' drawings are. It's pretty fun, but I, I found other party games that I, I like a bit better. And I do wish this came in a box half the size, but it's, a I think, an okay time. That is Pictomania uh, next up here. Okay, and last up in my thinking about purging category is Paris New Eden. I really like this game. The artwork is fun and colorful, and I think the gameplay is is solid. I just think I have gravitated towards games that I like a little bit better that are probably a little bit heavier than this one. This is a dice drafting game where you are trying to kind of build the best New Eden um, or kind of a clan of survivors that are uh, living in around Paris. And you do that by drafting dice from the different sections of the board that might let you draft some of these character cards and build out your little settlement. And yeah, it, it really is fun. I've enjoyed it every time I've played it. But I think some of the other games that I have that use dice drafting, like one that I'm going to talk about later in this video, and even the Magnificent that I talked about a couple videos ago, I just think are better games, even though they take longer to play and are a bit more complex. So I might keep this one around as kind of an introduction to dice drafting. Still a little undecided on that, but that is Paris New Eden. Okay, and then for my favorite games to start with the letter P, I have quite a few here, actually. First up is uh, what to me is a classic. And it's funny that it's in the same video because this one completely replaces Phase 10 for me and Uno and any other games that look like that. And this is Push, which I think is a much more fun and timely game. This is a game that plays in like 15 minutes. You can play with two to six players. And you're just trying to get the most points by pushing your luck, but not too far, like the box says. You'll be flipping over cards from the top of a deck and putting them into up to three different piles. A pile can never have two cards of the same value or color. And so if you flip a card over and can't place it somewhere, you bust, and that's bad. You have to roll this die, and you might lose points on your bench, kind of your saved cards. Um, so pushing your luck has some consequences. But you're also trying to make really good piles because after you decide to stop, you get to choose a pile first. And then any piles that are left over will either in clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on if a different card has come out. In that order, the players will get to choose from those. So you might purposely make a really bad pile and leave it for the next player to take. Very, very fun game for you know 10 to 20 minutes. Has even an advanced variant if you want to kind of go hardcore. And if you roll the, the black star, which is usually the safe side of the die, then you lose your entire bench. So yeah, I, I really love Push. It's one of our most played games just because you can really get anyone to play it, even someone that hasn't played anything but Uno. I think this is a great option for someone like that. That is Push. Okay, next up is Point City from Flat Out Games. This is kind of the sequel to Point Salad. And this is a fun little card game that plays pretty quick. I think you can play it in 20 to 30 minutes. And it's kind of an engine building game. You're taking cards from this center board. I believe they have to be adjacent to each other to take them. And you have to pay the cost on the card in order to put it in your tableau. 
and then the resources on the card will help you pay for future cards so it kind of escalates in that way and whoever can build the best city doing that where the most points wins very very simple game but i think it has quite a few different strategies and is it's just a fun feeling to have your little city that you're building there get better and better so that you can get more and more points so that is point city okay next up is a solo only game from renegade game studios in their solo hero series which i really enjoy this is proving grounds this is a dice rolling game and it's also real time so if you don't like those two things you probably won't like it but you have like one minute to roll a bunch of dice and you're trying to get um, sets with the same value and sets you can re-roll any die that doesn't have a match you can't re-roll so you're kind of breaking up sets to uh, re-roll them trying to roll a number that will match with one that's kind of stranded by itself and then you are assigning those dice to the different gladiators here in the arena that you are fighting if you have any singles that's bad then that gladiator will generally hit you for one of your hit points uh, but if you have a bunch of them then you might hit them very fun game i really enjoy it you can play it in 20 minutes and it also has six little expansions in the box that you can mix and match in which i think is a fun thing that a lot of solo games do to just kind of add some variability there's one where you control your little dragon companion there's one that adds a bunch of different gladiators that you fight against there's also like a little storybook in the game that you can read through yeah 28 page novella i think proving grounds is great it doesn't get quite as much love as some of the other games in their series which i do like those other ones too but proving grounds is a a pretty good entry point in my opinion okay next up is a classic i have the americana edition this is patchwork the two-player game from uve rosenberg and yeah this game is just super me and my wife really like this one you're trying to build out a quilt to get the most points and i think the system that they use here to let you draft the different patches that will go on your quilt is really smart there's a little token um, that will kind of follow those patches around in a circle and you can take a patch that is up to three spots in front of that token and then whichever one you take you move the token forward to that spot so you there's a lot of options in the game but you're kind of limited in which patch you can take on which turn uh, because of that three spot rule and it also has kind of that variable turn order sometimes called the ratchet turn order system where if you take an action it has a certain number of time points and if you're still farthest back on the time track then you get to go again very simple short game but it has some very clever systems and even after playing it you know a good dozen times we just have fun every time and i'm still terrible at completing the quilt but it is fun nevertheless so that is patchwork okay a few more here next up is a worker placement game called pan am and yeah this game is really really solid i feel like it doesn't get a ton of love but i really love it in this game you have a few different workers and in each round you'll put them in a different kind of section of the board might be the route section or the destinations section or the planes section and then you get to do something there you might get new planes for your airline you might get new destinations so that you can build a route on the board or you just might get these kind of end game objective cards and you're trying to get the most i think it's money or some other variation of points in the game and you do that primarily by building routes for your airline from one city to another and you have to have a plane there are four different kind of plane models for each player in the game that can travel different distances in order to build that route but then you're hoping to build in the way of the pan am airline 
so that they will purchase that route from you. Because when they purchase it from you, you can get a lot of points that way. So it's all kind of about that. A little bit of spatial puzzle, being smart with your worker placement, and trying to earn as much Pan Am stock as you can by them from them purchasing uh, your routes. So you might really focus on getting in their way and just having them buy all your stuff, or kind of stay out of the way a little bit and build some really long routes to get points. So I really like this game. It has a little bit of randomness in the event deck that uh, happens each round, but really, really solid. And I really wish that Prospero Hall was still around because some of their games have been some of my uh, favorites and they usually hit right at that like medium, medium light uh, heaviness weight that's easy to teach a game to another player. So really like Pan Am. Okay, next up I have two games from the same designer, probably one of my very favorite designers, at least in the kind of medium, medium heavy game space. That's Vladimir Suki. This is Pulsar 2849. I really like sci-fi, so I think the theme here helps a little bit. But this is a dice drafting game, the one I mentioned earlier. And this game just has a bit more going on in it than Paris New Eden, and I think it's a better, deeper, uh, and more fulfilling game, in my opinion. In this game, you will draft a couple of dice, and depending on where which dice you draft, you have to move up and down on these two tracks that determine turn order, and I can't remember what the other track is, but there's two tracks there. If you take a die that is higher than the median die, then you have to move the negative direction on those tracks. If you take a lower die, since they're less helpful, you get to move in the positive direction on those tracks, which really does help with some of the, uh, well, you generally will want the higher dice, but that track can be so important that sometimes you'll just take a lower one um, so that you can have more favorable position there and a better spot in the turn order. So I really like that system. And then it's just really fun to kind of zip around the galaxy here, building gyrodynes, starting them spinning, uh, visiting different planets. You can build these kind of asteroid, or not asteroid, uh, like space station kind of pieces and advance up the technology track. And you also have your own kind of objective board as well. Really, really fun game, kind of all built around that dice drafting system. Pulsar 2849 is excellent. Really, really love it. Okay, and last up for this video, like I already mentioned, is another game by Vladimir Suki. This is Praga Caput Regni. And yeah, this one is really excellent as well. A very different system and a pretty heavy, kind of long game. But I really like it. You're building up the city of Prague. There's a few like famous buildings here that you're building up and the there's kind of the King's Road and this cool bridge and the cathedral and the castle. And you're building out all of these buildings and these hexagons in the city. And you have your own little like resource board here that you're building out around. And these boards are really cool in how they track your resources. It has these little dials. And at some point the dial will hit a cube that's nested down in the board. And if you're able to get it past that cube, it unlocks something special. Really cool player boards. And then the action selection system, or how you take your turns in this game, I think is the best part. You take one of these kind of double hex tokens out, perform the actions from that token, and then rotate the wheel, and then put that one back at like the 12 o'clock position. And so the longer those double hex tokens have been in the wheel and haven't been selected, the more valuable they become. Because if they get into this blue section, you get some extra bonuses for them having not been taken in a while. But the ones that are being used most often might likely be in this red area where you have to pay an additional cost to take them because they were taken most recently. Very cool system. It also has this cool way of tracking the rounds in the game where there is a cube a wooden cube kind of inside part of the 
dial and as it spins around eventually it will lock down in this hole and won't twist anymore kind of to keep track of the rounds. Kind of a dry euro visually but and, and I guess in the gameplay too but I think is really really solid. It gives you tons of different options. You could really focus on the cathedral or focus on the castle build up a bunch of the city or focus on your individual boards or get as far up the king's road and into the bridge here as you as you want to this game is really really great if somebody really wants an exciting theme then they might not love this one but i the rule book has a cool section where it explains kind of the history of Prague and how they tried to represent those different important items in the game so i think the theme is really cool but it is definitely skews more on the historical side than uh, the game I just showed, which was you know, a lot more sci-fi and uh, fiction driven. So anyways, two games from Vladimir Suki here to end this video. That is Praga Caput Regni. And that's going to do it for this video. My collection of games that start with the letter P. Which of these games have you played? Which game is your favorite that starts with the letter P? I would love to hear about other games I don't have. It's almost impossible to have every game nowadays, so I'm sure I'm missing a bunch, but these are the ones that I have so far. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out the rest of the content we have here on the channel, our weekly podcast, our monthly giveaway, and I will see you on the next one when we talk about the letters Q and R. Thanks so much, and I will see you then.